Oh, hey, what's up? <laughs> did see you there. That's a lie, I did. We are nearing the end of the Switch's life, and I believe announcements and upcoming games we have now will be the last true releases for Nintendo's biggest console. Brace yourselves, because it's, it's not a lot. <laughs> oh, sweet. There's nothing in it. I did, however, manage to scrape together a little list of the top 10 upcoming releases for Nintendo Switch. I do, to begin with, have a disclaimer. I won't be including two games on the list, and I'll give reasons why. It's because I'm fucking blind. First is Metroid Prime 4. I called it when the game was announced it was scrapping everything and was starting over that it won't hit Nintendo Switch. My main theory is that the Switch just can't do what they were going for and instead of compromising, Nintendo just decided to bite the bullet and develop the project for a stronger hardware set. So in short, no. I don't think Metroid Prime 4 is coming to Nintendo Switch. The next game is Hollow Knight Silk Song because I'm very sure we just all experienced the same fever dream and uh it never was actually announced <laughs> you won't see those two always included games here before we begin with today's video if you like what you see leave a like it helps out a ton and if you're new here to the dial it back channel be sure to subscribe down below i am ranking these games based on personal opinion but that disclaimer never really matters <laughs> I'm sure you will tell me why I'm wrong and an idiot for thinking this way in the comments either way. Let's go. Alright, number 10 on the list is Mario vs. Donkey Kong, made by Nintendo, coming out February 16th, 2024. Hey look, Switch is porting another mobile game. No, this isn't a mobile game coming to the Switch, but you could have fooled me. And that's not saying much. The original depiction of Mario was in a Donkey Kong game when he was just known as Jumpman, and somehow they're still making him. You had Mario vs. DK on the Game Boy Advance, a terrible amiibo game on the DS. This series is just gross everywhere you look, but hey, sixth time to charm. Even the worst of Nintendo's first party titles still look great. After all, who knows their hardware better than the ones who made it? This is a puzzle platformer where you save tiny Mario toys. Your goal is to complete each level with the most toys saved. So far, the franchise has been, uh, okay, but with today's game prices, I just don't see this glorified mobile game being worth it, even if it is very pretty. I just see this as really a tie-in with the success of a Mario movie. Mario and Donkey Kong go head-to-head -head in the movie, so why not drop a game with the same premise? Number 9 is Tomb Raider 1, 2, and 3 Remastered. Made by Esper, coming out February 14th, 2024. This just in, Triangle Boobs, make a comeback. Finally! The Legendary Raider returns. God damn it! What is there to say here? Uh, there is a reason Tomb Raider exists today, and it has to be that its predecessors were successful, right? No, it doesn't. This was Uncharted before Uncharted. Uh, play a literal Tomb Raider as you find lost treasures by solving puzzles and gunning down the locals. And uh, that's it. This story is also just barely there, but, uh, but I have to admit, I'm a sucker for collections. And to have the classics re-released for preservation's sake is always welcomed by true fans of the art. Number 8 on the list is Prince of Persia The Lost Crown, made by <laughs> Ubisoft, January 24th, 2024. If the Gaming Awards had the most cringe trailer award this year, then I'd know who'd win that one. Just beat the trailer when you watch it. It, it's a better experience. <laughs> also, maybe don't look at who's developing it. You know, with all these warnings, the game needs to be in tip-top shape if it wants to last. Fortunately, the actual gameplay in the trailer looks to be of some quality. Nobody knows what to expect. I mean, they're... I mean, this is something Prince of Persia has never done before. Honestly, you can call it anything else and it'll just be a brand new IP. But they, for some reason, said, uh, that's totally Prince of Persia there. Getting Prince of Persia vibes from that. The game promises giant boss fights, tight platforming, and intricate puzzles. It says so right here. Can you read that? Who knows what the game sounds like, but graphically, it's the style of an indie game, but it's a multi-billion dollar company. Something we're seeing a lot more in recent years. 
Wait, why are we excited for this game? Oh, <laughs> it's because it, uh, we haven't gotten a new Prince of Persia outside of Remake since 2010. It's a 2D platformer. Number seven on the list is Wingspan, made by Monster Couch, December 12th, 2023. Why the hell is Wingspan on this list? It's because I like it. Next on the list, I'm just kidding. It's, it's a board game, but digitized, and, and the game is literally just that. I love playing the board game at my local game store since it's released in 2019. The game has a 40 to 70 minute playtime and can be enjoyed by one to five players. The game is played over four rounds, and the winner is the player with the most points at the end of the game. Wow, that is how literally like almost every board game goes. The game has 170 unique bird cards each with its unique abilities the game also has a european expansion and an asia expansion and the game not it's not just that for the board game they're also doing it for the digital game that's coming out too then these can be played as standalone games or with the core wingspan game you're basically trying to breed rare birds to repopulate the world riveting stuff i know i am doing a terrible job of so i this game's good i love this game <laughs> it's a great game it has won many awards but the difficulty of every board game is getting everyone together to play it with it now digitalized it's easy as ever for everyone to hop on at home and play a game or two while talking on discord that's where the magic happens number six is kirby and the amazing mirror i'm gonna have to dip into uh into switch online to finish this list god the switch is dying when are we gonna get that announcement nintendo switch 2 coming soon it's made by hal laboratories and it's to be announced we don't know when these uh emulation games are gonna drop they just they do it same day. Kirby really got rolling on the Game Boy <laughs> Advance. I, I mean, Kirby feels at home on this little console, I'm telling you. Enhanced visuals and more console enhancements to help the game include more features, which is important for a game like Kirby. The more stuff there is, the better it is for a game where you change into other things. What separates this Kirby from the six games before it is the Metroidvania style. Instead of choosing levels, it's actually one big map connected by doors, traverse it all to find areas and new power-ups and common Kirby bosses. Where the f*** am I? Who said Breath of the Wild was the first true Nintendo title that gave players full control? You could skip right to the end sequence in Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, and it's, it's even easier. And it's even easier to do it that way because there isn't any RPG mechanics. Just eat a sword guy, float to the end, and boom, you're, you're done. One hour game, easy. Number five on the list, we're halfway there, and uh, the uh, video's 12 minutes. Number five is Mario Party 3, Hudson Soft, and it is to be announced because it is an emulation game. The first Mario Party that thought, well, what if the players don't have any friends? The last Mario Party and the N64 is coming to NSO. This was the Smash Ultimate of Mario Party at the time. Everyone was returning, except for uh, maybe Toad. But all previous playable characters and Waluigi and Daisy are playable here. You're able to hold three items instead of one. This was the Mario Party. This was it. And it was that way for a while, even after the GameCube entries. Some still consider Mario Party 3 to be the pinnacle of the series. The characters, sure. The stamps for stars, sure. The boards, sure. But the mini games, Y'all, the most beloved minigames in the entire franchise are born here. The racetrack, the Blockfall one, the Ram Ranch, it's all born here. It also reprises the best minigames from the first two games. Man, no wonder it's a freaking banger. Nintendo may plan for online features like the first two on NSO, and sure, it has a single player, but multiplayer, like literally every party game ever, is really where it shines. Do be wary though, just because you go in as friends doesn't necessarily mean you'll walk out as friends, but that's a disclaimer shared between all Mario parties at this point. You know how it goes. You've seen the memes, you've lived the memes. Number four on the list is Luigi's Mansion 2 by Nintendo Summer 2024. Yes, Jesus Christ, yes. Dude, I don't think you realize how important it is for a 3S game to be remade on anything that's not a 3D freaking S. Sure, Dark Moon is one of the games that does not rely heavily on the dual screen setup but we got a 3ds game either way the game should have been called luigi's mansions because uh, the premise of the game is you go to multiple mansions to restore peace to this valley considered the weakest of the now trilogy i think a remake has huge potential even if it is just a remaster Luigi's Mansion is like Pikmin. If you played one, you played them all. It's puzzles with light combat. You unlock something, puzzles and combat changes. 
rinse and repeat. <laughs> the golden egg of Luigi's Mansion is the visuals and fun gameplay. They make Spooky so fun! I'm having the time of my life. Boss fights across all the games are unique, very easy, sure, but it's never just hit a guy until he dies, you know what I mean? What excites me the most is, like I said, a 3DS game being remade on a home console. I mean, the 3DS has an outstanding library with the and with the closure of the eShop on there, we need those games to be brought up to these newer consoles for preservation's sake, please. Ladies and gentlemen, it is top three time! Woo! You already know what the three games are because I haven't said them and they're pretty freaking big. Number three is Princess Peach Showtime, made by Nintendo March 22nd, 2024. It's Mario meets Kirby. Moving on to number two, we have. I just forgot. I would be a blatant ass liar if I said I wasn't extremely hyped for Peach's first true game. Sure, we played Peach in the past, but never have. We never had her on the cover. Especially if it's just not a cookie cutter platformer mark mocking Mario's thing, you know? She's getting her own game, her own mechanics. Not much has been said by Nintendo about this game, but what we've seen so far, it looks very promising. Peach's play gets interrupted by a bunch of no-gooders, and she just ain't having that shit. So, she transforms into multiple different professions to destroy the enemies in their own plays. Play as a pirate, she turns into a chef. Kung Fu, there isn't anything Peach can't do. Who wrote this sh Number two on the list is uh, really freaking long, so I hopefully, I hopefully I can paraphrase this. You can tell I was very excited about this game when writing this script. It's Golden Sun, Camelot Software planning to be announced because it's an emulation game. You may want Isaac and Smash, but this is the closest you're gonna get. <laughs> this is my favorite Game Boy Advance game of all time, and remember, Pokemon Emerald is a contender, so that is saying something. Golden Sun is the game that says, fuck you, Square Enix we can do RPGs too. Golden Sun was an RPG that received high praise and, and most believe it was even greater than what Square Enix was doing at the time. Publishers who were already in the business of pixel art storytelling before it was cool. Golden Sun is close to a masterpiece, having RPG tropes flipped on their head and a gripping story that twists all over the freaking place. This thing twists more than uh, LeBron's ankle. I don't watch basketball. So you control the protagonist, Isaac, a significantly powerful adept as he prevents the past from happening again using the powers of the Jin. The character depth and art was on par with console games. Need I remind you, you can take this game anywhere. And at the time, that was insanity. You could play a game like this on the go. You can now have a gripping game to grind in while you and your parents drive to Disney World. It's amazing. And even better is you can do it that again using the Switch's quirk of being a hybrid system. I really hope not just, uh, you know, people coming back to it, but I hope more players will find Golden Sun for the first time and just experience the magic that is uh, the greatest, one of the greatest, the greatest Game Boy Advance game of all time. Number one on the list, I'm not gonna blue ball you, it's Paper Mario Thousand Year Door made by Intelligent Systems and Nintendo March 22nd, 2024. Super Mario RPG and now Paper Mario Thousand Year Door don't tell me because I know it's not true, but is is Nintendo listening to us? No, they can't be. It's like they had a meeting and said, let's just drop everything people said would be cool if we brought it to the Switch at the end of its life. And they did that. Thousand Year Door isn't just the best Paper Mario. It's not just one of the best Mario games. It's an amazing game in the grand scheme of gaming as a whole. The gameplay is Mario RPG, but way more in depth with different moves and stats. Fights are more interesting and leveling is always fun to flush out new builds. I personally love the comedy of this game, and I think it's like that for most others too. It takes a meta approach to its jokes and really goes out there to get a laugh. Highbrow humor is good humor. As it sits right now, Thousand Year Door is the biggest game coming to Switch in 2024, and that is like announced right now, at, at, at least by a height standpoint. Oh yeah, it's both the end of the Switch's life and the end of the life of this video. Thank you so much for checking me out. Is there anything I issued that you're personally excited for? Anything I added you don't agree with? Let's discuss it all in the comments down below. Without further ado, it's time for another generic Contro Catch Rage.